audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. When we push them out, God has this intersection point for a lot of hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I prepared this program six months ago just for you. And boom, yeah. there's this intersection of what we've done and what God's doing. I love hearing those stories. Our guest today will be a familiar voice to many of you, especially if you're a regular listener of Focus. He's a husband, father of six, an author, speaker, and is heard in thousands of radio stations to millions of people all over the world. We hear little stories from time to time, but who is the man behind the microphone? Our guest today is none other than John Fuller, co-host of the Daily Focus radio program since 2001. We're going to hear a little bit more about his life and his calling. That's John Fuller with my wife Kate and myself Brett Ryan for Focus on the Family Australia. Well, welcome, John, to the program. Thank you so much. It is wonderful to spend some time with you. Well, it, it is quite unique for us to be in your office, basically. And yeah, I'm I know. It's kind of weird. Jim's for, seat. It's weird Kate's for me in to your see seat. Kate in my seat. <laughs> but I'm good with the change. Let's let's just mix things up. So I hope it's not going to be too unfamiliar being in the uh, guest rather than the co-host. It's be fun. I've so done I'm, I've done lots of radio interviews over the phone, especially. So it's fun to do this in person. Yeah. So let's start off. Do yeah. people recognize you just by your voice and you're walking down the street and people say, no. are you, and are you, are, 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 we no. have that happen to us in Australia. So really? I'm wondering what it would happen here in the United States. No, I've, I've had a situation where I was on a plane and a guy said, what'd you say your name was? After we were talking for a few minutes. And I had a situation just ironically last week. Uh, I was at a medical office and after about 10 minutes, the gal doing the paperwork said, do I know you? And I said, well, maybe. She said, do you work at Focus on the Family? I said, yeah. Are you the John Fuller? And it's like, well, I'm John Fuller and I work there. And I don't know of any others. But <laughs> that, so, so after a while, but no, there's not, a, I mean, I'm not a celebrity or anything. Yeah. I guess a familiar fixture in a lot of people's lives yeah. just by virtue of showing up. Well, in fact, I had someone come to me today because I said I was going to be doing an interview with yeah. you. And they said, oh, he, he's like part of the family. Oh. He's like my family because they listen to you on a regular basis. So it is an incredible privilege. Oh, it's wonderfully rich. And it's a privilege. It's very humbling, too. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't aspire to this. The Lord put me here. I'll take it. And I hold it with an open hand. Well, we look I'm forward enjoying to exploring this yeah. in more as we have a chat. So, Kate? Yeah, John, can you tell us a little about your upbringing and faith journey? Yeah, yeah. I was raised in a fairly religious home, although I would say knowledge of the scripture and understanding of a relationship with God through Jesus wasn't part of our our religious heritage. So my parents are good. They're still alive. They're good moral people. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in their late 80s. My mom is 87. My dad's 91. Wow. That's a good long I still life. get to see them. Yeah, they're doing yeah. okay. They still live independently. Um, they taught me morals. They taught me right and wrong. They inculcated in me, let's call it a religious vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a faith tradition, mm -hmm. came to know Jesus, though, when I was in high school, um, was part of a Youth for Christ group, mm -hmm. a bunch of high school kids and some adults that kind of guided us. And I was 16, and I decided that they had something I didn't have, yeah. and I wanted to know what that was. There'll be yeah. lots of people listening to this today who say, that's my journey, when yeah. they knew God in their head, but it wasn't until they had God in their hearts. Yeah. So how did your parents respond to that? Well, they were disappointed. Um, <laughs> to say it kindly, they were disappointed, but they were also surprised supportive. They knew the kids I was hanging out with, and I threaded the needle by going to church with them on Saturdays, because if we could do that, that counted yep. toward the weekly attendance, and then <laughs> going to the other church that I became familiar with on Sundays. And my dad was, he, he felt a little bit conflicted about mm -hmm. this, and I get it now. On this mm -hmm. side of the parenting coin, I it's get right. it. Yeah. Yeah. So he talked to one of the people at his church who said, well, Tom, if he's hanging out with good kids and he's being respectful, I think you should just let him do that. And my dad did. And um, we don't have the very same beliefs, but there's so much overlap yeah. and so much 
that we can talk about that doesn't get into the minutia. Yeah. So they've been so. supportive, understanding. Certainly they understand the nature of focus, the more ecumenical yeah. um, kind of elements of focus where we don't take a denominational position on things. Yeah. Well, so they're great people. Well, before focus... What was John Fuller? What did he study and what did he do before well, that, being the voice? Yeah, I appreciate that, Brett. There's a, a disconnect between what I studied and what I do. I was going to be a photographer. Oh, Here wow. in our studios, we have some really nice pictures. I didn't take them, but I love <laughs> outdoor photography. I love kind of National Geographic kind of stuff. And I was yep. hoping to be a, a big-time magazine photographer. And somewhere along the way, I realized I was a little short on talent and commitment. <laughs> And I remember saying to somebody, you got to eat, live, breathe, sleep this stuff if you want to make mm-hmm. it in photography. And that was long before digital cameras made everybody a photographer with a great camera in their pocket. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I was still doing some photography and found radio. And um, that just turned out to be a gas. And it turned out to be something I really felt I could do and do well. So radio pre-focus. Yeah, I was part of a a wonderful opportunity to start up a Christian music radio station in Texas in the little community I lived in. And um, they were a 50,000-watt FM with a desire to reach people with encouragement and Christian music and Bible verses kind of scattered throughout the day. And um, I fell kind of into that camp of people and uh, found myself really appreciating the ministry impact of Christian radio. And um, while I was there, uh, several years after a successful run of of getting the station established, starting another station, not me, but being part of that Mm -hmm. group, I heard about Focus and um, Focus moving specifically. I knew of Focus because we played Dr. Dobson on our radio programs, but I heard that Focus was moving to Colorado and God guided us to consider that as a possibility. Really? Yeah. Well, you've been here for a lot of years now. Uh What is something that you love most about being VP of the audio team? You know, I I love meeting people that say focus has been a part of my life, the broadcast in particular. And I especially love, and Brett, I know you get this, Kate, as well, what I call the divine intersection. So we make broadcasts here in this booth, in this studio, and we push them out literally across the world through mm. you know a variety of associate offices and and such but when we push them out god has this intersection point for a lot of hearts yeah, yeah. and he's like i prepared this program 6 months ago or 6 weeks ago just for you and boom yeah. there's this intersection of what we've done and what god's doing i love hearing those stories i mean we, we I had a woman who called us we were um, talking on the broadcast that day about staying together, staying married, and not divorcing. David Clark was the guest, and he was literally pounding the table saying, if you're thinking of a divorce, don't get it. It's worth working for your marriage. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. happened to me. Yeah. 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 And so she called us and said, okay, I'm sitting in my car. I was going to call my divorce attorney and get this thing done. But I heard the guy on the radio saying, don't do it. So I'm calling you. What do I do now? Oh, that's so familiar, isn't it, Brett? Yes. Oh, it's, it's goosebumps because yes. those stories, I mean, we at Focus on the Family Australia love hearing those stories. We don't get enough. We'd love to hear more about that intersection. It's like they're the only one who's listening to this and they're thinking they're the only ones who are going through what they're going through. Right. And it's like God's speaking to them directly through the radio and we're part of that journey and it's quite extraordinary. So, yeah, if you're listening and God's touched your heart through the ministry of focus we want to hear those stories Mm -hmm. yeah they they are the lifeblood for the ministry i mean really we have the benefit on this part of the ministry of making radio happen and hearing from people you know there are people that make mailers possible people that do graphic arts people that you've been on the campus it's clean we have people dedicated to keeping this place clean they don't get that kind of feedback but they're part of the whole story and so that's what energizes me the most i think is being part of a creative effort that I know, I mean, my theology says God can and does use this, and yeah. the, the evidence seems overwhelming. He does that because I've actually been in the audience 
you know, in my car listening mm. to something, and I've needed it. So I know other people have been there too. <laughs> I'm glad you're saying that because as we were parenting younger children and we listened to James Dobson, <laughs> and when we were, you know, when Brett took on the role as CEO of Focus on the Family, and now we're sitting here and people are listening to us, mm -hmm. we are so humbled yes. by that. And the people who are sitting in before us and sharing their story, mm -hmm. their journey, mm -hmm. and how God's used them and how that can impact people who are listening and their lives it's almost like eric little in chariots of fire yeah, yeah. you know it, it do, was do, a great do, movie do, and do, just do, the, do, the, do, the do. depiction of his different running style yeah. but when he says you know when i run i feel god's pleasure that's what i get mm. to experience on a regular basis yeah. working here at focus on these radio programs our guest today is john fuller co-host of the daily focus radio program The Word for Today is Australia's most widely read daily devotional, designed to give you practical teaching to keep you focused on your relationship with Jesus. Read it online or subscribe to the free printed edition at thewordfortoday.com.au. Well, welcome back to Focus on the Family Australia. Our guest today is John Fuller, co-host of the Daily Focus radio program. Well, we can hear some of the highs, yeah. and there's plenty of great stories and testimonies, but what are some of the challenges, you know, working in the ministry that you have experienced? Some, mm. of the, some of the things that aren't so great that, yeah. you know, people may not be aware of. Are you asking for dirt on Focus on the Family? <laughs> well, you ask? Just I little mean, specs. Just okay. do the specs. <laughs> well, first, uh, a quick story. I remember that... I was hiring an administrative assistant, and I hired her, and she wept when we first met. She was like, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so appreciative of focus on the family. <laughs> that. And she was just so happy. And I said, we are sinners here, and there's no ministry that doesn't have people who are sinful mm. and who struggle. Yeah. So we have conflict. We've gone through lean times over the years of having to say goodbye to loved coworkers because yeah. the money just wasn't there. We've had moments of spiritual attack where it's very clear the enemy doesn't like what we're doing. Yeah. So we've experienced those, but those are light and momentary afflictions, if you will. I mean, in the context of working anywhere else, I can't imagine wanting to be anywhere else yeah. because the mission of focus and the ministry impact is so significant. And particularly when the whole point of our journey is to point people to Jesus. And so if we get to sit here and point people to his word, his truths, and how to do life well, what's better than that? Well, sure. And in, in, in terms of you know the, just the personal challenges, I, I love the passage that Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 where he says, yeah, the comfort we've received, we want to give yeah. you, that shapes a person's yeah. life. Some of those harder times, the difficult valleys that we go through. I mean, pregnancy centers here in the U.S., I've met a number of people that started outreaches to unwed pregnant uh, women because they themselves were an in unwed that position. pregnant yeah. woman. Yeah. And people that say, I want to help foster care kids because I was in the system. Mm -hmm. I just... You think about how God uses our pain. Mm -hmm. and uh, He promises to do that, doesn't he? He does <laughs> redeem it. Nothing yeah. is ever wasted. No. It feels like it sometimes. Mm. The journey the can moment. be long. Yeah. And there are people that are dealing with lifelong challenges. Mm -hmm. They might have a child in a wheelchair who can't communicate, and it's never going to be better apart from some miraculous touch from Jesus. Mm. So I'm not invalidating that expression no. of God's mercy and grace in that moment. He uses all people mm. even those yeah. that can't speak and yeah. we for his glory encourage those who are listening you know we're all in full-time ministry we all have opportunities you know whether mentoring coming alongside somebody a young couple who just got married or a couple that have just had their first child you know if you've got some runs on the board you don't have to be perfect mm. and mm. that's a word that i want to put Absolutely. a pin in that, that perfect you, yeah. you were mentioned earlier that the fact is that you know this woman who was overwhelmed going to work in focus on the family or potentially work at the focus on the family. And then you said, we're all sinners. We're yeah. all fallen. But this idea of perfection, you have been married for 37 over years. 37 years. Well, congratulations. Yes. And you. you've got six children. You're the parenting expert. You're the marriage expert. Is that the case? Of course. You don't have any 
Any Thank challenges? you for having me. <laughs> What's the next question? <laughs> I think you know one of the one of the joys of working uh, with Jim on the broadcast has been the way he opened the door for us to express to fellow believers in Christ. Nobody's got it figured mm, out. Yeah, we're all trying. We're all failing at some point. I know some families that have escaped tremendous challenges for now. Yeah. But eventually, if you live long enough, you're going to have your share of mistakes and problems. If I'm an expert in anything, it's chaos um, <laughs> and it's failure upon failure. I think the yeah. Lord just said, I'm going to make sure you have six kids just to keep you humble, John, because you <laughs> you might think you've got this. And the answer is wrong. You don't have this. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, honest, I mean, we've, and all of our kids are adults now. We've had one child with an eating disorder. We have one with a mental health uh, challenge that will be forever. Uh, a couple of them are doubting God. One of them has said, no, I don't believe in God. Another one wants to, but isn't sure about how to go forward. And then one of them is an elder in his church. So we, we have the broad spectrum yeah. Yeah. of expression of faith or not in my family, but we're at least all talking. We can get together. We're supportive of each other. There was a moment when my youngest, who has some special needs, was really struggling. And um, in just a matter of minutes, the kids started coming. They showed up all together at once in That's this beautiful. tremendous demonstration of we are family and we're going to figure this out. Differences aside, let's be yeah. together now. That's the way it's supposed to be. You're putting relationship first over differences. You know, it'd be easy for me to say, yeah, but, but I've chosen just to live with grace mm. and to recognize um, – Probably one of my favorite parables in the scripture, the parable of the, I'm going to say the forgiving father, mm. probably more popularly known prodigal as son. the prodigal son. <laughs> that boy came to his senses, and he crawled back to his dad, and that father led with acceptance, love, mercy, grace. Mm. He bent down, he kissed him, he hugged him. The boy was filthy, stinky, had rotting clothes, had nothing but shame. That dad lifted that boy out of that with acceptance and love. Mm. I think Jesus was telling us something there. Yeah. Yeah. And if we as parents can go there instead of saying, you fell short here, um, you didn't do this right, you know, I'd love you more if. But those are the signals we tend to send. Yeah. And I guess God has pushed me beyond that, not because I'm all so holy or anything, but because it's the only way I can make cognitive sense of me trying to raise kids well and they still struggle, mm. and they still, they still remind me, unintentionally even, of my shortcomings. And, uh, look, I think that's such. It, I so appreciate you sharing that, John, because there are so many parents who think I've done my best. You know, I, I thought I did I everything all the right. Boxes. Yes, I thought I did everything right, and still my children have chosen to go another way, and they take all of that on themselves, mm -hmm. uh, like they are God. And we've all done it, so I'm saying it because we've all done it, and we think if we just do this, this will happen. And that's not necessarily the way it's going to go. Um, our children have free choice. We free all have will. free choice. And so sharing your story is so important for parents to hear. The story isn't over. No. I keep no, saying that's that. that's the thing. I my wife actually looked at me and said, that's not helpful right now. I said, but it's true. The yes. story's not over. My God is big, mm. and he can do anything anything. Yeah. I mean, he took Paul, who was killing people <laughs> yeah. that were Christ followers, and made him a lead Christ follower. He That's can right. do these things. Yeah. Do you believe that for your child? I hope you can press through the doubts and the all the self-guilt that comes on. And we do get caught in the moment, don't we? Rather than looking ahead when the emotions are high, running high yeah. in the moment, <laughs> we can get very caught of this is what it's always going to be like. And yet, so what's most helpful for you when that happens, Kate? Well, for me, God tends to stop me on that track because I will be in a rant. You know, I can get in a rant with God. Of, mm. Why is this happening? When will this stop? What am I supposed to be doing? Uh, why was he so rude? You know, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, as I, I suppose I slow down a bit, God says, did you forget that I've got this? Yeah. <laughs> mm. I love it's, that. It's not about you. Yeah. It's what I'm going to do in his life. And in yours, mm -hmm. because I want you to trust me yeah. in I the think, moment. I think a lot of our listeners today will be encouraged somewhat that, you know, the man that they hear on a regular basis 
is flawed and has his own challenges. And we need to hear this. And as Kate was saying, sometimes we need to be caught and reminded that um, God loves our children more than we could ever yeah. love our children. And I know that's a paradigm thinking shift to actually say, as Kate said, you know, he's got this. He's got it in his hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you're sharing your stories of some of the challenges, how have you processed it personally? How have you, you know, with the journey of your children, maybe yeah. just turning their back on God or some of the mental health issues? How have you processed this and, and with your wife? Well, I think there is a general observation that Jim makes from time to time that women look first inside mm-hmm. And um, maybe we guys don't do that so quickly. So my first answer to you would be probably that stereotypical way where it's like, oh, well, it's a bad choice, but oh, well, go live it and find out. Mm -hmm. Um, My wife, Dina, would tend to say, but where did we go wrong? I have those moments, Mm -hmm. believe me, Mm -hmm. but I can't linger there. Mm -hmm. Um, It's absolutely what you said, Brett. Do I love my child? That's what God's asking me. He says, first, I love this child more than you can imagine. Mm. Oh, I love you that same way, by the way. Mm. (laughs) Right? Oh, man. He got my attention on this years ago. I think the turning point for me, he just kept working on me. The turning point was when my youngest, who has autism, he's got some other stuff too, but he was getting verbal about four years of age, five years of age. I took him for a walk in the park. And... For those who still have vinyl or remember vinyl, you should get vinyl if you don't have vinyl records. <laughs> they never re- really left. A little retro but, there. <laughs> yeah. There was a spot sometimes when a needle would stick in a groove. Yes. And just root, root. <laughs> it would just repeat, repeat, repeat. So this boy had that kind of a verbal delivery. And we started our walk, and within a few minutes, it was obvious. Daddy? 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 He just kept saying that. Oh, did you know that... There are some things that really get to me and irritate me. And one of them is a little like a noise in the back of my car, a rattle mm. that I have to go find. I have to isolate it because a little rattle like that that keeps going. just Something repetitive. Yeah, it just gets to me. So I was aware this is going to be bothersome. So I said out loud to myself, I said, time it. So I set the timer for 10 minutes and I counted how many times he said daddy, 40 times in 10 minutes. And he never really listened. I'd say, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, dude, what? And he really didn't answer. Mm. He was bidding for my attention. And I just thought, wow, Lord, that's a lot of daddies. And he's, the Lord said, aren't you glad you adopted him? And he's got a daddy. Isn't that oh. cool? Oh. <laughs> Talk about getting to the heart strings. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, I mean, crying. The, Lord, She's crying. the Lord had me, but then he just... He gave the the final bow on the message. He said, and by the way, you're just like him with me. And I thought, oh, I am like that. Yeah. I do that all the time. I say, hey, Heavenly Father. And I I don't even listen to him. And I think it was kind of, that was the breaking point where I realized I have to parent like God does. I can't like God does, but that's. That's what he wants. He wants my daddy heart to be like his. Well, we're yeah. meant to come to him like little children. Yeah. And have that trust and that utmost faith that children have, and we lose it as we get older. But we need to come back to that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and that's why we have a father, daddy father. So when, when my children make a choice, I've tried to kind of give them a safe space to tell me what's going on, what they're thinking or what they're doing. And I used to lead with correction, but I'm way past that, I think, now. It's just sort of acceptance for who they are. I wouldn't have gotten that tattoo, or I wouldn't have chosen to quit that job, or I I think these things. I don't say them, because... Wisdom in that? Well, sometimes. uh, Sometimes even a fool, right, is (laughs) thought-wise, if he doesn't say anything. I think that's a proverb. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to just want to be with them for who they are yeah, and not see the mess. Support them when I can, how I can. They know as the te- well. They yeah, do the teachable know. moment is coming, but absolutely, you're right. If you've parented well, they know. Mm. You don't have to mm. convince them. They know. Mm. Well, unfortunately, time is getting the better of us. And I just thought I'd give you the final say. Mm. You know, if there's listeners right now who are hearing and, and as I said, maybe encouraged to think, well, John Fuller, he's had his own challenges. You know, he hasn't got it all together. They might find some comfort in there. What would you like to say to them right now? I'm thinking of a book that came 
to me from a friend. It's by Oz Guinness, and I believe the title is The Call. And in this book, Oz, who's a a wonderful Christian thinker and speaker and writer, uh, he basically paints the picture of an audience of one. Mm. And he makes the very compelling case to not perform for the world, but to seek out God's attaboys and God's pleasure. Find what makes God happy and do that. And um, life will give you lots of opportunities Mm. to step into messy situations, to demonstrate Jesus, to please your heavenly Father. Go there. Don't worry about what man thinks. Don't worry about what's going to polish off the resume, this, that, or the other thing. Those things will come. Mm. Seek first the kingdom. And I think if you seek to find God's heart and to please him, you'll probably do well in life. That's fantastic. Well, John, this has been an absolute privilege and pleasure to find out a little bit more about yeah. the man behind the microphone and hear about his calling to focus. And uh, may God richly bless you and your family and, and Dina and, and your children as they navigate their worlds. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for being our guest today. No, oh, Brett. Kate, I so appreciate you, and thanks for turning the tables, literally. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks for joining us. Our guest today was John Fuller, the co-host of Focus on the Family in the USA. Focus on the Family Australia is a donor-supported ministry. We rely on the generosity of people like you that have a passion for God-honoring families. We would ask that you prayerfully consider how you could partner with us so that we can continue to create resources to help you and other families to thrive. You can go to our website at families.org.au. On behalf of the rest of the Focus team, Kate and myself, Brett Ryan, we'd like to invite you again for another edition of Focus on the Family Australia. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.